Welcome to curl 7.76.1. Here is another release. I did it uh, just a few hours ago. And um, yes, it's a patch release. <coughs> and I am, of course, Daniel Stenberg. I, I hope you know that I started the curl project. I am the lead developer of it since a very long time. We're 23 years old now. I work for Wolf SSL. We do curl commercial support for anyone who wants to. Today I'm going to go through my regular few agenda items when I'm doing my release presentation things and I'm going to show you some numbers about the release. There's nothing security wise to talk about and there are no new features in this release. I'm going to do them fast. There's been this is just a patch release and it's only been a few days <laughs> since the previous release actually it's been 14 days but two weeks. So I'm going to run uh, over a few of the most important ones that I think or most uh, interesting ones or whatever. Uh, and then something about what's coming next, of course. And uh, uh, the, the chat is there. Ask me anything if uh, I'm being vague or just inconsistent. So this is release 199. And since this is now uh, previously not really planned uh, patch release, but I didn't plan it when I did, when we did the previous release, we're now much closer to release 200. So if we're doing everything correct, the next one, well, the next release will be release 200 and it will ideally come in the end, in the end of May. I'll get back to the release schedule in a, in a second. Two weeks, but we got contributions from um, 23 different humans. 10 are, were new. So now we have 2,366 contributors to curl, 14 people authored commits in this release, six new committers, 878 um, code committers. Well, not all is code, but the committers in the main code repository. Awesome, a bunch of people, a lot of them. <clears throat> Time. Yeah, it took 14 days since the previous release. And the primary reason why, uh, why I decided that we needed a patch release and not do the full eight week cycle until a full, you know, uh, proper release it was because of one of a rather fatal bug in the previous release. And I'm going to highlight it in a second. Now we're at 8,426 days since inception. A long time. There's no security advisories in this release. Uh, it doesn't mean that everything is perfect and if you suspect anything you go to this URL hackerone.com slash curl and uh, submit all the details about your suspicions and we, if confirmed we will reward you with money. <clears throat> Quite a lot of money if, if it, you find something serious. There's actually 21 bug fixes. I did uh, not write this slide properly because uh, I'm sloppy. So just a few bug fixes. And so we had only had 14 days. We did 21 bug fixes. Some of them were more, you know, updated some docs and, and clarified some details that most of you won't care about. So I'm, I'm just going to highlight some of the most interesting ones from my perspective. And this is the primary reason for this patch release. I botched the HTTP2 selection over HTTPS for a bunch of different TLS backends uh, in the previous release in 7.76.0. And the reason is, and okay, this is slightly complicated, but I'm going to try to explain it anyway. So when we set, uh, when, when uh, an application uses uh, libcurl to talk HTTP, you can ask libcurl to use this HTTP version or, uh, you know, no, HTTP 1.0, 1.1, HTTP 2, or even HTTP 3, actually. So you set that as a set opt. I want to use this version. And then curl go, uh, runs ahead and, and uses that version. Uh, well, according to some rules. Anyway, but internally in, in libcurl, we have, there are ways where, for example, the server can deny uh, um, version two and say, no, no, go use HTTP 1.1 instead. And then the, the server will return that and curl will retry the same request with 1.1 instead of two, in spite of what you asked for in the set opt. And previously, well, 
before 776.0, we did we had a little mistake in the code that made us use the wrong variables internally. So if you would then reuse the same curl easy handle, it would get stuck on that 1.1 forced downgrade even for further next uh, transfers. That was a mistake, so I fixed that. But then I accidentally broke the HTTP2 selection for HTTPS for some TLS backends, pretty much because I didn't test it properly. And we have a lot of TLS backends and we have a lot of CIs, but we still didn't really cover this case. Uh, what can I do about it? Well, we can do even more testing and we can run more tests with more TLS backends, but it's, it's difficult. So um, here we are, we're doing this patch release and now HTTP2 selection. So when we select HTTP2, when using HTTPS, it's an ALPN negotiation, right? So it's an ALPN is a TLS extension. So the client has to tell the server, we can speak these protocols, pick, pick one of those. And that list should then include HTTP2 if, if that's what we want it to uh, be able to select from. Uh, other more minor, that's, I mean, the HTTP2 one was the big one big. Uh, it didn't cause any uh, fires or, or burn downs anywhere, but uh, okay. Um, we, um, we fixed a little thing. So if you do p parallel mode uh, downloads with curl, the command line tool, you know, uh, capital Z or Z, um, there was a little bug that could make the final progress meter update not happen if you did small files that happen fast. So it, anyway, it would just show the wrong progress meter status, a little sort of UI thing. Um, I broke uh, do getting directories over file colon your, um, URL syntax. I think it was in the previous release. So this is another regression and I broke it because I tried to fix one little detail in it and then I broke another similar to HTTP2. So I, I, yeah, it is repaired uh, again. And then you can ask uh, uh, sort of why would you even get directories over file colon since we, we're not listing them. You would just get the status of it. Pretty much if you use, um, you could get the, the date of the directory. That's pretty much the only thing you can get from it. Um, yeah, I don't know. People are doing it anyway. So, and then uh, uh, another <laughs> really, really silly bug, uh, coffee. It is that, um, so it, when you're connecting to a HTTP proxy, it, it, it returns a 407 response code. It basically means, sorry, you're not authorized to pro provide the credentials and uh, try again. And if, uh, if you do that and, the, and the, the, con uh, the proxy also closes the connection, which uh, it could do, uh, uh, curl would retry that connection. Oh, I got a four of seven and it's closed. So let's uh, retry it. But <laughs> since we, even in the case when we didn't have any credentials, it would do this, but without having any credentials, so it would just resend the exact same uh, request again, which would be closed and you got another four of seven. So you would just sit in that endless loop, uh, r r ridiculous bug. I'm slightly fascinated that nobody else has found this before. Uh, of course, now it, it will only try that again if it actually has credentials. So if you actually provide something that allows it to authorize against the proxy and then it'll try the uh, request again. And then if it closes it again, it'll just actually then it'll uh, stop trying because that's the, the regular curl uh, give up if the authentication doesn't work with proxy or servers. So, uh, you know, we've been around for 23 years. We can still have uh, really silly bugs or I can. <clears throat> okay, those, those were just four of the 21 bugs we fixed, but um, the other ones are, are less interesting, I think. You can read up on about all of them in the change log, of course, and follow the links to the patches and, and, and the pull requests, whatever 
you want to read and learn about them. So uh, again, I'm, this is, I'm reusing this slide from the previous release because I'm still planning on having the next release to be 7.77.0. And this time, of course, 7.77.0 might, uh, well, it will. I'm going to go out, uh, go out on a limb here and say that it will be released 200. So a lot of, a lot of sevens will be released 200. So I, numerically wise, it looks good. Stuff that we might get into the 77.0 release. And I'm saying extra might this time because we're shortening the release cycle now. So since we did this patch release after two weeks, we're, only, we're going to shorten the uh, release cycle for the next release with two weeks so that we get back on track on the eight week cycle that we are actually set out to do. So there's only six weeks left to the next release, meaning we have only three weeks until the next feature freeze. And if the feature window opens on Monday, there's basically just two and a half weeks for new features. So <clears throat> that means that we um, will scrap SSL version two and three completely and uh, just remove the ability to set those options in libcurl. I mentioned this before. Um, we will enable HSL, well, I, I will try to do this. We have these uh, pull requests already there. Well, most of these are actually already pull requests. So we have two and a half weeks to make sure that they land and stick in the code. Uh, there's an, an option to set the stream window size. I've, I've discussed this before, basically limiting the amount of data that we can need to um, cache if we pause a transfer when doing multiplexed transfers like HTTP2 and HTTP3. There's this uh, wake up thing, uh, waiting and wake up on with WinSock events. I know Mark is very eager to land that early in the uh, feature window to make sure that Windows people get to test this for as long as possible. So hopefully they will have five and a half weeks to test it out and uh, possibly find problems with it because this is is a bit of a sensitive area because uh, Mark has done this twice before and reverted them twice. So this is the third third times the charm for this uh, particular, well, it's not the exact same code, but it's the exact same idea. Uh, replacing the socket pair implementation for, for some stuff internally. Because socket pair doesn't exist in Windows, so we have our own uh, custom implementation, but it's a bit lame. It's better to do it uh, with native Win Windows uh, APIs and stuff. Uh, <clears throat> I'm I'm looking forward to this. I, I think get other info support on for uh, libc um, platforms. Uh, it seems to have stalled a bit, so I'm not sure that is going to happen now. Might happen later. I don't know where where that's going. We're going to make. Us I'm hoping that we're going to do this, which is just a slight change of behavior, but we're disabling auto credentials, which is about um, client certificates for TLS when built to use S channel on Windows. S channel is the Windows native uh, TLS stuff. And it's the it's a bit of a mess, maybe, maybe a strong word, but it's, uh, it is a mess. <laughs> so <laughs> it's not going to try to use uh, client certificates by default, unless you're asking for it, is the idea. I hope we will get to that. Um, <clears throat> oh, all right, and I added this little thing. I'm going to do uh, added IPv4 numerical parsing in for the next one, and uh, that is that is you know, this is an interesting one, and I have a particular I have a new blog post about it to explain it. You know, when you do, for example, you can write if you p type ping and the large number you know, a 32-bit number, it'll convert that 32-bit number into an IP address. It's actually, or, or rather, it'll use the 32-bit number as its raw IP address. And you can do the same. If you if you go to your browser, you can type HTTP colon slash slash 155555533972, and it'll convert that to, you know, the regular IP address you're used to see with four dotted decimal numbers. Curl supports that somewhat, but I'm going to make sure that we support it properly and sort of consistently for all different name resolver backends and that we 
normalize the addresses and IPv4 addresses internally so that it'll actually work <clears throat> better. I'm doing a horrible job of explanation, uh, explaining this, but um, um, I think if you're into formatting IPv4 numerical addresses, uh, go read the issue and the pull request, and I'm going to detail that further, as I said, in, in a blog post coming why, when I have, have that landed. <clears throat> it's a bit of a, I, I think it's, <laughs> actually, I'm, I don't really like that way to write IPv4 addresses because it's a bit of a uh, obfuscating, you know, if you do it, just, if you just try that once, ping 127.1, you know, just two numbers, it will work for example and, and it'll work even in browsers and everywhere that is using well not all, everywhere but most places where you can use urls and and ip addresses you can do those shortened versions i'm just going to make sure that we do it a little bit more stricter in curve anyway we have also some other stuff that might happen that are still pending that have been around for a while now waiting in pull requests and this is, uh, I, I just took a look at this earlier this morning, this pull request for adding another way to share data between transfers. And this is the known host handle so that you would do known host handling for SSH connections better between uh, separate transfers in curl. And I'm, I took a look at it and it seems to have stalled a bit. So I'm, I'm, I'm actually putting a question mark on this because I think maybe this, uh, this will fade away unless someone is actually uh, grabbing this task and refreshing it and make sure that it actually, you know, meet all the criteria that it has to meet in order to get merged. And we have more HTTP, HTTP 3 fixes uh, needed. There's a pull request that is looking, uh, I would say, non-optimal that might need to be refreshed or fixed in order to get merged. but. There are some issues uh, still around, still left with HP3 that we should fix. There are actually several uh, outstanding things for HP3. So if you're interested, there are work to do here. I might get around to it. I have other uh, plans for my, uh, well, next month or two. We'll see about that. So that is, we're looking forward to a 7.77.0 in on May 26, which, as I said, it is the same date as I planned before. So it means that we're sticking to the schedule. We're just shortening this release cycle with two weeks. So we have we will open the the feature window on Monday, this coming Monday, and then we will allow the, we will open the floodgates and let everyone merge uh, pull requests that are, are looking good. And then we will just see how much of those new features and stuff we can get into the um, get merged before we close the feature window. And we will close the feature window then and leave the bug fix period a three week bug fix period until. So three weeks before May 26, we will close the feature window. 21 days before that. So it'll be May 5, right? Uh, trying to monitor the uh, this, the chat as well. Uh, I'll get to the questions after the stream, I think. So if you go to this particular URL, the, that's the continuously updated pending release notes for the coming release. So go there and see if you're interested in what's coming in the uh, release that we're working on. Of course, you can buy support from Wolf SSL if you're interested in, in getting premier help for your company and your organization from me and we help you get curl going contact us that's the url to get all the details if you have any problems any issues with curl file a bug on this url and of course as i said before if you submit your security problem to on hacker one you might actually get rewarded with money and this is a little graph in the bottom showing the total bug bounty payouts we've done we paid over five thousand dollars by now and we hope to pay more money going forward so just report problems we have a lot of awesome sponsors um, this is the 
April 2021 list of sponsors going from the top ones that are the biggest sponsors down to the silver sponsors in the bottom. Awesome people and uh, thank you for for helping Curl well strive really. Uh, so this is Curl today, April 14. Curl 77 76.1.